Coming up on DTNS, Uber gives up calling drivers contractors in the UK. Wikipedia is about to charge, and the chip shortage hits Samsung. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, March 17th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lang. From Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. We were just talking about uh, relevant Saints days and the naming of hurricanes on Good Day Internet. If you'd like that wider conversation, we also talked a little bit about NFTs. Become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Facebook said Wednesday it will impose new restrictions on individuals and communities who repeatedly break its company rules. So people joining groups with past community standards violations will now see a prompt to review that group before they join. Facebook also wants to give moderators more responsibility, specifically in groups with a substantial number of people who have violated the company policies in the past or were part of communities that Facebook previously shut down. Someone with repeat violations in Facebook groups will no longer be able to post or comment between seven and 30 days, also losing the ability to invite other people to a group or create new groups. Twitch sent out an email to its streamers announcing it added new tools for creators to deal with takedown requests and copyright strikes because that's efficient that they had to develop an entire new system just to deal with copyright strikes. Specifically, Twitch added tools to let streamers mass delete their recorded streams to avoid being permabanned. A Tampa, Florida teen who took control of some well-known Twitter accounts last summer, you might remember a few of them, President Joe Biden, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Kim Kardashian, mm. Apple, Uber, just to name a few, and solicited more than $100,000 in Bitcoin to restore those accounts, has pled guilty in a deal with state prosecutors in exchange for a three-year prison sentence. Because of his age at the time, the man who was a minor at the time, was tried as a youthful offender, avoiding a minimum 10-year sentence that would have followed if he'd been convicted as an adult. Riva Health, which was founded by scientist Tuhin Sinha and Siri co-founder Dag Kitlaus, is attempting to monitor blood pressure using software for at-risk patients to potentially indicate early signs of heart disease. To use Riva, you just need to open the app on your phone, tap go, and then put your finger over the camera sensor it uses the flash to send light through your finger and then it can track your blood pressure they have a special algorithm to do it and it creates a rendering it of it on the screen hipaa compliant but not yet fda approved uh, Amazon will expand its healthcare program, Amazon Care, to employees outside the state of Washington, as well as other companies. Amazon Care offers virtual meetings with doctors in an app and the ability to dispatch medical professionals to your home for things like physical examinations and also blood draws. It's run in partnership with a company from Washington called Care Medical. Amazon Care will now be available to other companies in Washington as well. Later this year, the virtual service will be made available across the U.S., and in-person care options will be added in Washington, D.C., Baltimore, as well as other cities. All right. Workers of the U.K., drive, says Uber. <laughs> Unite as drivers, I suppose, uh, kind of. Anyway, hey, speaking of Uber, Tom, they announced... They have reclassified all 70,000 of its UK drivers as, quote unquote, workers. In the UK, the worker category has fewer rights than an employee category, but more than a contractor. It's a, a third category that we don't really have over here. Workers are guaranteed the national living wage of 8.72 pounds, uh, holiday pay and contribution, contribution to pensions. Uh, Uber will treat the national living wage as a minimum, meaning if the driver earns more than that on their fares, they will get paid more, but they'll always have that minimum, but they can never make less than that. However, Uber will calculate hours from the moment a driver accepts a trip, not count the time spent waiting between trips. This contradicts the UK Supreme Court's ruling on February or in February that Uber would need to count all time a driver is logged in and available to accept rides. Uber believes the uh, February court case only applies to older policies it ended years ago and that it should not pay drivers while they may be logged into competing apps as well. Yeah, Nate Langston did a great video uh, about this on, on Bloomberg. Uh, and I really do think that the worker category is right. Uh, the worker category, my limited understanding, means I 
am entitled to some benefits like a pension and minimum wage, but I don't get all the benefits of a full-time employee because I am allowed to just not work when I want. And that's essentially what an Uber driver is. It's like, you're sort of at the mercy of Uber about getting rides, but you get the freedom to not work one day without having to call in or anything like that. So I think that category makes sense. I think it's interesting that Uber uh, has just decided to wave the white flag and say, you know what, fine, we're just, we're just gonna call them workers. We're not gonna fight this anymore. Uh, but I do think it's interesting that they wanna fight if somebody wants to bring the fight to them over paying people while the app is logged on. I think they have an argument. If I've got Lyft and DoorDash and Uber open, should Uber be the only one that pays me when that app is open? Should I be able to get paid by three apps when I'm sitting there and I'm going to turn the other two off as soon as I accept a ride from the other one? If you're if you're a, a company that pays you, or let's say you're an employee of a company that's taking phone calls from some customers, that makes sense. You're getting paid for that. But if it's a uh, a technology that allows you to then take calls in between those calls, but it's for another company and not to the benefit of the one you were just taking calls for, you wouldn't pay them either. So I do think they have a point there. And oh. um, I hope I hope they don't get stuck with that because that seems too far to me. I mean, a lot of this also is, okay, let's say I'm an Uber driver. I'm in the UK. I'm in maybe a more rural area or otherwise just not getting a lot of fares. And I'm not working for a competing service at all. I'm just kind of waiting to get some money by somebody using the service that I have signed up to do. I can see where there are times where, yes, it makes perfect sense that being in that uh, employee category that is not a full-time employee, but also better than a contractor makes sense, especially because you're allowing uh, the workforce to be able to work for competing apps. But what if you're, you know, it's not really up to you? I mean, yeah, I guess you, you could make the argument if I gave up other money-making opportunities to sit in my car and wait, and I just never got a fare, shouldn't I get something for that? I think Uber's saying that that rarely happens, but uh, right. to the person it does happen to, they're going to want to get paid for that. So I, I get that. The, the other outcome here is if this sets a precedent for other fights uh, around uh, the world, uh, if they're going to look at the UK and say, that's a precedent. I'm not sure it does because we went through this in California. We went to the Supreme Court in California. They made a ruling. Uber then got laws changed and they, they've kind of gone through this process. This is the end of the process in the UK. So it's, it's a little different in each region. Snap has acquired Berlin company Fit Analytics, which helps you get correctly sized clothing and shoes when online shopping. From 18,000 partners, North Face, Asus, Calvin Klein, Patagonia, Puma, and more. Right now, if you're on one of those sites, you may see the ability to enter your measurements. And then Fit Analytics is what that site is using to use some machine learning and match you to the proper size from that brand. Because, you know, sizes may be a large, uh, but maybe you get a medium from Puma uh, or, or something. You know, they, they vary across brands. Fit has also developed, though not yet launched, technology to use an image to match clothing. So now that Snap is going to acquire Fit Analytics in the future, Snap may be able to suggest an outfit that will make your selfie look better and then send you the right <laughs> size. Snap as a service. Uh, I, I love the idea, probably just because I'm like, okay, my selfies, I don't really care about that anymore. I'm not using Snap that much in that regard, but I, I cannot tell you, and you know, uh, it, I'm sure there are a lot of hands being raised when I explain this. How many times I will say, okay, I need a new pair of jeans, for example. And I'm at a retailer's site and I kind of go like, well, but do they run large? Do they run small? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the size chart. And then you look at the size chart and you're like, I mean, I'm kind of probably in that area. I don't know. I wish this was a little bit easier just to know. Or you end up like Googling it and going to forums where people have been talking about that particular brand of jeans, you know, for 10 years. So it's all out there, but it's kind of convoluted. Something like this, I can I can find, at least for me, especially because I have size fitting problems all the time, would be great. Yeah, I have this thing where um, no XL shirt is the same ever. So I can't order them anymore because some of them come fine. Some of them come too long. And this is a simple T-shirt we're talking about. Some yeah. have the sleeves right where I want them. Some don't. And I end up having to get extra large, or excuse me, double X as a default now, not because they're big enough, but because 
I know I'm covered on length. I'm a tall guy and there's not much I can do about it. So anytime I've used any service where there's some sort of even basic fitting kind of services attached to it, the better. And, you know, speaking in a time where, you know, we're, we're getting a lot more of our stuff online, more than we ever did, more goods and services that we're used to seeing in brick and mortar stores, clothes being one of those, the more we're going to do that, the better that experience needs to be and the more accurate that experience needs to be. And right now it's a little bit of a crapshoot. So I, I'm, I'm all for this sort of it stuff. Also, oh, go ahead, Tom. Just real quick, given that Snap is a camera company too, this makes mm, sense in yeah. piping the camera and the e-commerce together to get brands into Snap. Oh, and I mean, listen, if this worked well and I was like, I don't know, just look at my body and tell me what size I need kind of thing, that works great in theory. However, you also have you know, companies that for years have been saying, oh, you used to be a four, now you're a size zero because it makes you feel be better about yourself and that's how we're going to sell more jeans kind of thing. So the whole thing is a little bit more like real reality. What size are you really? Yeah. And that may, you know, that... That may backfire in some and, cases. Well, if it reduces returns, that's a big cost saving. So That's true. Yeah. You might see them just call everything a zero and then Fit Analytics decides what, what size you actually yeah, get. Yeah. Like what? No one cares what your size is. Just <laughs> yeah. send us a photo and we'll send you the cheese. Right. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Well, Pin Duo Duo has passed Alibaba as the Chinese company with the most annual active users with 788 million to Alibaba's 779 million. So just ahead, but ahead. China has around 989 million internet users. Alibaba is a shopping and content giant. Pin Duo Duo offers a shopping app that started by connecting buyers directly to producer growers, but now offers everything from oranges to iPhones. It's just a shopping marketplace. Alibaba still makes more money in Q4 revenues, uh, um, specifically of 221 billion won to Pinduoduo's 26.55 billion won. Pinduoduo was started in part by a former Google employee, Colin Wang, who stepped down as chairman Wednesday to devote all his time, as he says, to researching food and life sciences to improve China's agriculture. Besides connecting farmers with shoppers, Pinduoduo also has been working with farmers to pilot AI farms. Yeah, um, if, you, if you haven't been following this as closely as, as some of us have, uh, Pinduoduo passing Alibaba in annual active users would be a little like Shopify passing Google in active users uh, this past year. I mean, Alibaba is a little more like Amazon than it is like Google, but it's that big. It's that yeah. large. Uh, I guess it'd be like Shopify passing Amazon maybe. But Pinduoduo is really fascinating because it's not trying to be a marketplace like an Amazon or even an Alibaba. It's trying to be a connector to say, hey, you got a bunch of strawberries you want to sell? Let me connect you with 100 people in the city that want to buy strawberries so you don't have to pursue each one of those relationships. And vice versa, Pinduoduo does the group buying thing where if everybody gets in to buy a thing, the price goes down. Uh, it's it's really fascinating, and they are skyrocketing. Pinduoduo just started in 2015. Yeah, that was crazy. Like you, your comparison of saying, you know, this is like Shopify suddenly having more visitors per year than Amazon was a pretty apt comparison. It just doesn't feel like that much momentum should have made or that much ground should have been made up in just five, six measly years uh, in internet time. But I don't know, market's different over there, so different conditions or whatever. But that's that's amazing. Like, that's just crazy. That's like saying, sorry, Google, you were finally taken over by DuckDuckGo. <laughs> like, it just seems like an improbable overtaking in, in this age. Usually when you get the numbers that high, you stay there and you kind of own them and no one ever you know, quite competes with you. It's crazy. Yeah, it is skyrocketed growth for sure. Uh, I also found it somewhat interesting that um, Pinduoduo's Colin Wang stepped down as chairman Wednesday. It doesn't mean that the company will do anything badly uh, um, going forward, but might do things differently going forward. Um, but uh, this is a very nice uh, a number and metric to say, you know what, look at us. We've done yeah. quite well. And by the way, I would like to step down and do more research on food and life sciences, which Binduodu has tapped into already quite nicely. And it's going to benefit them. It's a little like Eric Schmidt taking over Google so Sergey can work on the algorithm, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. Hey, folks, if you want to join in the conversation in our Discord, you got thoughts about Pinduoduo or anything else, uh, link your Patreon account at patreon.com slash DTNS. During an annual shareholders meeting, Samsung co-CEO Ko Dong Jin said worldwide chip shortages will impact its business next quarter. That's significant. Ko said, and I quote, our business leaders are meeting partners overseas to solve these problems. It's hard to say the shortage issue has been solved 100%. You don't tell shareholders that unless you have to, unless you're worried that you would be culpable if something bad happened and you hadn't warned them about that. Samsung is the second largest made-to-order silicon supplier in the world after TSMC, but it does rely on suppliers for, for parts, just like any other manufacturer, including things like power management and radio chips. Samsung securities analyst MS Wong said shortages of Qualcomm chips, some of which are made by Samsung, you may not realize Samsung is a manufacturer for Qualcomm, even though they compete on some chips, uh, it's affecting everybody except Apple. Apple seems to have weathered the storm well, but uh, Wong said, PCs will soon be hit due to the short supply of display driver integrated circuits and the profitability of television will be affected by soaring LCD panel prices. So we're still in the point where these chip shortages are going to get a little worse before they get better. Everybody's saying about six months. Samsung's Austin, Texas plant was affected by power outages last month, so that doesn't help. It reduced its production of Qualcomm 5G chips, which could reduce global smartphone output by as much as 5%, according to TrendForce. And Co. also said the company is considering skipping a new Galaxy Note this year. And you'd be forgiven for saying, well, yeah, I guess if they can't make parts, they're, they're going to make fewer phones. But Co. said this is unrelated to the chip shortages, saying it could be a burden to unveil two flagship models in a year. So it might be difficult to release Note model in second half. The timing of the Note model launch can be changed, but we seek to release a Note model next year. So he's saying... And maybe what he's saying is there's not demand, but he's saying too complicated this year, uh, but we'll do a note next year. Don't worry. Huh? Like it, the, the, the chip shortage thing feels like every time there's any kind of um, the shareholder meetings or, uh, Hey, what these were our plans for the next quarter or any of that stuff. I always feel like I'm just kind of on my, on my, the seat uh, edge of my seat with this sort of stuff. Cause I don't <laughs> know what they're going to say. And it's always the worst uh, idea in my head that it's going to be, oh, they're never going to make this again. Or this means that uh, it'll be everything will be 50 percent more expensive because of whatever. And usually it's just, yeah, we might be a little bit delayed or whatever. In this particular case, though, you you said earlier, you think maybe it's a demand thing. It may not even be and like they have to they have to be able to talk about the chip shortage or acknowledge it, that the elephant's in the room. But it may, may just me that that bigger phone or that that particular line just isn't seeing the same traction it used to see well or both right it it yeah the chip shortage is i mean it's a real thing affecting all sorts of uh companies in 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 lots of uh different categories but for samsung to say okay shareholders heads up <laughs> Yeah. Things are going to be a little wonky this next quarter, and here are the reasons that we, you know, we we can certainly point to true evidence as to why we would have a harder time with this. But at the same time, we're not going to sell that many notes. You know, we're, we 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 think it's the right time to not try to push a product that would eventually be seen as a lot of people as oh a failure. No one wanted it. Well, they might want it uh, in si slightly different circumstances. Yeah. For whatever reason, Samsung has decided to put all their oomph behind one flagship brand this year. Uh, and and Note fans have been worried about this day for a long time. So Ko was very quick to be like, don't worry, we seek to put it out next year. But seek is different than promise. So, you know, if you want to be up anxious about it, there, there's room to interpret that there. I do think it is probably more of a marketing, a market estimate decision than it is a temporary chip shortage decision. I think if they thought they could sell the notes, they'd figure out how to squeeze yeah. out a bunch of them. Well, the Wikimedia Foundation announced that it's going to create a new paid service called Wikimedia Enterprise for use by companies that need customized access to its data. Wik uh, Wikipedia has an API available to anyone that's used by companies like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, all without charge. That free API will not change. Companies may still use to, uh, choose to use it for free, but Wikimedia Enterprise could deliver data faster, also customize formatting to make it easier to handle, and also provide new options for sorting or posting. 
One example is an option to get the most community vetted edits on articles instead of just the most recent ones. Yeah, sometimes Google has, has been the victim of, you know, somebody does a little vandalism on Wikipedia at just the right moment. It doesn't get caught and it shows up in Google search results. Uh, so that could prevent that. It doesn't happen that often, uh, but I think this is incredibly smart. I see it misreported in headlines everywhere as Wikipedia is going to make the big tech companies pay. They're yeah. not. Uh, the big tech companies can keep doing it exactly the way they're doing it. What Wikipedia yeah. is doing is saying, hey, we think it would be worth it for you to pay us to make it better than what you get now for free. Are you surprised that this is their first, uh, well, I shouldn't say their first, they mostly fundraise. That's how that's how Wikipedia yeah. stays afloat. Uh, mm. This seems like an interesting way to, I don't know, pivot a little bit. And they're, and they're not really taking anything away from anybody. This doesn't affect end users. You and I can still go to Wikipedia and get whatever info we want and benefit from the site in the ways we always have. But this is an interesting new way to, to monetize it. And sure enough, like I think Wikipedia could make the argument that their website, aka the vast array of content available at Wikipedia, uh, is already this massive thing that everybody relies on. Every search engine shows uh, you know, upfront results from Wikipedia. They all do it in some way or another. Yeah. And so they're yeah. all using and they it all as look this like really important thing, right? But they don't pay for that in a in a meaningful way. So I guess this is just about Wikipedia making sure that they provide enough value for the price to that, so that these companies say, yeah, we'll we'll go the extra step and and do it your way. The formatting part of this seems like what is most beneficial for any company that would want to pay for it. Cause like you said, Scott, there's that, you know, that little excerpt where you go, I know where that's from It's Wikipedia and everything kind of looks the same, but you know, the idea of delivering data faster. Okay. There are probably some use cases for that, but to be able to customize the formatting to what kind of makes it seem like it's your own thing. Um, if you're a third party, that does make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. I, I think of it, the, you know, you don't pay for windows 10, anymore, right? It's just Windows 10 and you get the update. You don't have to buy a new Windows 10 when Windows you know, 11 comes out. They just don't do that anymore. Where they make their money is charging enterprises for support. And in fact, those enterprises basically get Windows for free too, but then they get all the support that goes with customizing it and rolling out patches in a better way and all. This is the same thing, but for Wikipedia information, which is, yeah, you can get it for free, but we could make it easier and better for you uh, if you would like to pay us. Well, has anyone here ever wondered why hummingbirds hum the way that they do? Seriously, like scare the crap out of me sometimes in my backyard because they sound like hornets coming in. They're, they're... They, hum they're... is a very nice way of putting what a hummingbird does. There's yeah? an insect-like quality to it. Yes, I agree. If you don't know what you're listening to, new research from Eindhoven University of Technology, Sarama, a spinoff of, of the company from the university, and also Stanford University, explains how the bird's wing generates its sound at 40 beats per second. And you might say, 40 beats? I mean, is it really that fast? Yeah, it is. It's really fast. That's what makes a hummingbird a hummingbird. The researchers observed hummingbirds using 12 high-speed cameras, six pressure plates, and 2,176 microphones, and found the audio results to be not unlike insect wings. Less birds more insects, and this could help uh, in the future making certain devices like fans or drones quieter because they would mimic that insect-like quality rather than a bird. This explains so much. Uh, <laughs> Because it, it sounds like a drone, or or it really does sound like a hornet. I always think like a hornet is is aiming at my head and wants to sting me when a hummingbird shows up. And then I see this very peaceful, lovely hummingbird, you know, just hanging out by the flowers and everything. And I'm like, oh, okay, uh, it's fine. And <laughs> it, it, science has made it all make sense to me now. I find them incredibly relaxing. I haven't been around a hummingbird in a while, but um, that to me is synonymous with spring growing up. You just hear hummingbirds. And for whatever reason, that sound doesn't freak me out, but bees do. So if I hear a bee humming near me, it's like I want to run from those bees. But not hummingbirds. It's fine. We Come land hummingbird? on my shoulder. Come drink nectar from my ear. I don't care. You ever I'm seen the TikTok you. of the guy who spent like 12 months getting the hummingbird to land on his? Anyway, yes. it's a really good one. I'll send it to you. Yeah. <laughs> they might be able to take too. some of this analysis, too, and use it in technology, right? Uh, and be able to to create new flying things and oh for sure 
and stuff yeah, because like there's so I think there's so many there's so many devices now that it's like I mean helicopter bird quality maybe if you know we we push the envelope a little bit uh, we might get devices that make more sense for us. Yeah, I just need to be able to communicate that my ear is not a flower hummingbird, <laughs> and I'll feel perfectly safe. Uh, they were right. here before your ear was. Think of it that way. You're you're part of nature for them. Yeah, so. but some curious hummingbird one day is going to be like, well, what's in there? Check it out. <laughs> All right, let's check out the mailbag. Uh, let's do it. So yesterday on the show, we reminded folks that a Daily Tech News show and This Week in Science, we are collaborating. We're going to have a crossover show in April, and we really want to solicit ideas from both audiences of what we should talk about, what we should what we should use for the hive hummingbird mind of ours. John Bailey wrote in, said, ever since and probably before Star Trek Voyager, I've been interested in the concept of bioneural circuitry. We're slowly starting to work towards things like prosthetics that can interpret the body's electrical signals, but what about reversing that process? Could it be possible at some point to build a biological processor? Ah, and there there are there are DNA computing and, and similar things, neural networks. So yeah, that is a good one, John. Thank you for sending a topic. We will definitely put this in the hopper for the upcoming This Week in Science crossover show in April, just about a month away. Uh, keep them coming, folks. Feedback yeah. at dailytechnewsshow.com. Shout out to patrons at our master and grandmaster levels. Today they include Gadget Virtuoso, Carmine Bailey, and Eric Holm. Also thanks to what a slew of brand new bosses, so exciting, Bernard F., Brian Yeager, Amrit, Kepper67, and Michael Gosling. Oh, and also Todd Pachota. Wouldn't want to forget you. You all just started backing us on Patreon, and we thank you so much. Thank you, bosses. Also, thanks to Scott Johnson for being with us today. What's going on in the Frog Pants universe? Oh, uh, so much. There's uh, just a show for everything. If you're thinking, man, I sure would like a show for topic A, I'll bet you'll find one at frogpants.com. So go check it out. Give a show a listen. Uh, it's super easy to navigate and find what you're looking for. Uh, bound to please somebody. So check it out. That's frogpants.com. And if you're trying to grab me on the personal, <laughs> find me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash Scott Johnson. Hey, folks, if you need just a headline, sometimes you don't have 30 minutes even for Daily Tech News Show. Check out our related show, Daily Tech Headlines. All the essential tech news in about five minutes from Jen Cutter and or Rich Droffolino at DailyTechHeadlines.com. We're live on the show Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. Please join us if you can. Love to have you. You can find out more at DailyTechNewsShow.com slash live. And we'll be back tomorrow with Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>